Okay, so I haven't talked to you for a long time. <clears throat> and uh, people were asking me to say something. And, um, so I wanted to begin talking about the idiocracy of the meritocracy. Um, I mean, there's no reason to listen to me unless at some point, you know, you hear the truth. And I'll always try to tell you the truth. And um, I just want you to remember that if you hear something that's true, the truth is already in you, you know, to begin with, because otherwise you wouldn't recognize it to be true. <laughs> Once you heard it, it would just go over your head. So, I'm going to begin talking about uh, the idiocracy of the meritocracy because what happens is, uh, well, you know, I mean, everybody gets herded into school and you're an A student or a B student or a C student or you're a flunky, right? And everybody realizes that this is a game. It's not about humanity so much as it's about getting to the top of something. We're not really sure what that something is, but it has to do with eventually, you know, how much money you can spend and what kind of a job you get. And so we wind up with people that move to the top of the pyramid, you know, because they put years in, you know, and they do have a certain formal knowledge. I mean, they have a form of knowledge and it's formal training but, you know, I just imagine, you know, the guys that I knew that got to the top of the class, you know, they were the ones who knew how to study, who knew how to make the grade. But if it was history, you know, they were never <laughs> really interested in like, well, who caused all these wars? And, you know, uh, <laughs> why did they keep happening? You know, it was more uh, what battle happened on what day and what general won and <laughs> who lost. And, you know, and you make the grade, right? <clears throat> question is, is that knowledge? And, <clears throat> you know, do we, peop do we have, you know, people at the top who have that kind of knowledge? And um, what I see, you know, is a dysfunction in the pyramid because as you go higher and higher up in the command structure, the information crunch becomes so huge that the command structure is unable to process all the data points that are hitting it. And all you need to do is have one or two really bad days. <laughs> and all the data points that hit you are, you know, it'll wipe out just about any processor. Especially, you know, when they're, I mean, I think in economics, you know, they prosecute economics as warfare, um, the competitive strategy of warfare. <laughs> it's not environmentally friendly uh, economics. Uh, it's not people friendly economics. It's, it's armies of titans clashing together, you know, to find out who gets the spoils of a, of a better deal <laughs> and lower prices. And what we get in return is worse deals, cheap stuff for cheap prices. And we all li live, you know, cheapened lives. This is what, you know, the great meritocracy has brought to us. And <laughs> and yet, because they've worked so hard and they've climbed the ladder, they feel entitled, you know, to their position and their power and their ability to determine the future for everybody. <laughs> and the first thing they want to do, one of the first things they want to do is cut off your entitlements. <laughs> you know. But I have a f clue for them. You know, there are no bastard children of God. Yeah, let me repeat that again. There are no bastard children of God. So... <laughs> And 
There are no bastard children of nature, for that matter. Nature is uh, very subtle and very much alive and intelligent. And a lot of us don't even recognize or realize the capacity of nature. I mean, your cells talk to each other, you know. I mean, <laughs> figure that out. We're not listening to that, but they're talking to each other. Not only that, they're talking to, <laughs> you know, a lot of the microbial existences that are around them. So, uh, and de <laughs> determining, you know, who's friend or foe. Um, and this has been going on for eons, with us or without us. So, you know, the question is, you know, <laughs> as people hit the streets, you know, I see millions of people hit the streets saying God is great and they get shot with bullets, with real bullets, you know. What? No one can say that God is greater than any king. <laughs> no one can say that God is greater than any president or dictator. Nobody, the people don't have a right to say that. Who do, you, who do you think gave them the right to say that? It wasn't a king or a dictator. No. It was their creator. Gave them a right to say that. And kings and dictators need to get used to that. You know. The pyramid is collapsing, and everybody sees it. Everybody's standing on the outside, and they're watching it collapse. And they know, you know, that there are people who are probably going to go down with the Titanic. But there's a way off the ship, you know. And the way off the ship is to see <laughs> the sinking ship. They grab a life raft and see everybody on the network, because it's a network. And it's not a pyramid based on power and prestige, <laughs> but it's a network based on knowledge and understanding. If you know somebody who knows something and you understand that you know, he can achieve a certain result, and you need that, you know, and you have the means to you know, make that happen, then you, know, you go to that person and they become a valuable asset to you <laughs> on the network. <laughs> that's how the network operates everybody's equal but everybody has a different knowledge because everybody has a different experience and society what it asked me to do is it asked me to join a group of people that want <laughs> to get rid of me <laughs> I want, I'm supposed to join a group of people that are trying to do me in, right? Because I can't support their pyramid and I can't support the nonsense that supports that pyramid because knowledge does not rise to the top. Knowledge does not rise to the top, especially in a system that only cares about money because I've seen this over and over again where knowledge will come to money, and money will say, no, it's not going to make me any money. And so money kills the knowledge because it doesn't make any money. People could have free electricity, but nobody would make any money. There would be a, a huge and tremendous abundance of the world having free electricity. But if nobody can make any money, then we shouldn't do it. <laughs> this is the absurdity. We could feed the whole planet, but who would make the money? There would be a tremendous abundance if we fed the whole planet. There would be. So you begin to see, you know, <laughs> it's not so much the seed capital as it is the nurturing capital that enables things to happen. And when you take all the nurturing capital in the economy and you stick it into heavy metal <laughs> and gold and silver and heavy metal, <laughs> it can't flow. It's like damming it up. It dams up the current of the currency. And 
So nobody has a job. Nobody knows what to do. Right? Nobody has a vision. We have the United States. We have all these countries. We have billions of opinions. All kinds of opinions. You turn anything on, there's another opinion. But there's no vision. They're, they have no idea. <laughs> so, give up your opinions, you know, and work for an idea. And the things that made the economy work are very simple ideas. You know, find a need and fill it. Simple idea. You know, there are other ideas like let's take care of each other and take care of the planet. It's a simple operating system. It only requires a little shift in vision. Take care of one another and take care of the planet. And you'll find that <laughs> your children will agree with you. <laughs> They'll agree with what you're doing if you're going to take care of one another and take care of the planet. And you'll begin to realize that our children, you know, <laughs> we're incubating the future. You know, if you teach your children to hate the world, you're going to have a world that you hate. If you teach your children to be cynical about knowledge and to only go after money, then you'll have a greedy world, you know, that will put everything into metal and everybody will starve because nobody can eat the metal. And that's what you're doing. That's stupid, really. You're doing it out of fear. And more and more, everybody is recognizing your fear, you know. You're afraid of what? Of people? Let me tell you, you know. The scientists know that D DNA, we're all 97, 98% same DNA. You know, so we're going to persecute everybody else for, you know, the 3%. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Give peace a chance. Give people a chance. The reason nobody spends any money is because nobody trusts anybody. And the reason nobody trusts anybody is because people are playing the economy as a game. But life is not a game. Life really is not a game. So wake up from the game. You know, marry the princess, do whatever you need. Wake up from the game. You know, and begin to work to save the planet by taking care of people and taking care of the planet. Only two things we need to do. If we take care of each other and destroy the planet, then we're destroying ourselves. And if we take care of the planet and destroy ourselves and sacrifice ourselves from, for the planet, you know, we might as well just be fertilizer which we've almost become so look at these pyramids and see if anything can be adapted for the network that's coming the network is a next world made up of real people who are really trying to take care of each other and take care of the planet the world is freaked out about losing its job and losing the money and everything is going down the tubes and I, you know, they're, you know, they need to get over their fear and join this new operating system. It's simple. Anybody can do it. You want to start a donut shop. You go, well, how am I taking care of people and how am I taking care of the planet? And it pretty much gives you the parameters and the engineering and the limitations that you need, you know, in starting your donut shop. Anybody can do it. And everybody begins to do it, whether, you know, the oligarchs or, <laughs> or the uh, intelligentsia or, you know, any of them. 
get it. You know, the people, if I'm telling you the truth, you know, the people will get it. <laughs> people will get it, you know. It's not a bad idea, not a bad way to go. And they can have all their giant games and their giant lotteries and who wins and who gets to be, you know, it, the it person for the day, right? Just stay on the ground with me, people. Stay on the ground and help a brother out, help a sister out, you know. There are no bastard children of God, seriously. You know, for all you religions out there, you know, if you didn't create it, you know, then you better understand it before you condemn it. That's why it's almost always written that God is the judge, not you, right? So <laughs> stop judging, you know, with your opinions. All you're trying to do is climb this ladder of ego that makes you better than me, right? So you're better than me. I just wait for your fall, because you're going to fall. <laughs> but if you stay on the ground, you know, everybody thinks there's a ladder. You know, oh, I'm going to climb to the top of the world. Guess what, people? The world is a sphere. Everybody who's on it is on top already. They don't need to climb anywhere. Nowhere you need to climb. What, you're 50,000 feet? <laughs> I don't know how you climb... Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> oh, I'm this many feet, you know, above you, right? So I've, you know, triumphed over you. I can shoot arrows down at you. <laughs> the triumph, you know, is to stop ignoring, you know, the knowledge and everything else. That's the triumph. You know, when we really begin to learn, when we really begin to understand, that's the payoff of knowledge that happens on a network of knowledgeable people who are <laughs> able to speak freely, you know, because they're not judged and condemned by idiots who think they're higher than you. Right? Then you can speak. You have the freedom to give your knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we'll find there's knowledge everywhere. A lot of people know. A lot of good people. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know how long this is. Mm, 18 minutes. That's long enough. <laughs> I wish you all happiness and peace. And uh, thanks for hanging in there with me. <laughs>